Throughout the centuries, executions have been used as a way to instill great fear into the population. Many executions were done in brutal ways to put a criminal to death, and some, such as hanging, drawing and quartering, carried the ultimate shame as well as horror. There were many instruments made to help carry out the brutal sentences, for example the breaking wheel, where a condemned victim would be strapped to and would be beaten to a pulp with clubs, breaking all of their bones. Also, swords were used, and these were seen as a reliable way of beheading a prisoner. For example, during the Tudor period, Henry VIII brought a swordsman over from France to execute his second wife, Anne Boleyn. With this, he did not want his wife to risk the botching axeman, who would use a block and an axe, which was considered less reliable. But there was one weapon used, which also was used as an execution method, and it was rather primitive and shockingly could be made by practically anyone. The garotte was a handheld ligature, which was used in a number of countries to carry out executions. Join us today as we look at one of history's most brutal execution methods, and remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The garotte is a weapon which is used simply to strangle someone. It can be made from many different materials, for example a rope, scarf, fishing wire or even a chain. There are some who used it throughout the centuries in the form of a contraption that tightened around the neck of a condemned person. Throughout the years they have also been used as a murder weapon and have been historically made also from telephone cord, guitar strings and even piano wire. A stick sometimes can be used to tighten the garotte to finish someone off. Following the Second World War, the garotte has been used by many different soldiers in a military setting to silently kill guards and enemy soldiers, as it was seen as a quick and discreet killing method. Some special forces and units are even trained on how to quickly make garottes out of pieces of wire or anything they can get their hands on. A military garotte has two wooden handles, which are attached to a flexible piece of wire, and then the wire is thrown over the head of the enemy, then the two handles are pulled tight, killing the enemy and silencing them rather quickly. The French Foreign Legion even used a double loop style garotte, where a double coil was wrapped around the neck of a victim, and then pulled tightly. The weapon has been used as an assassination technique inside of different gangs also, and was used historically in the 17th and 18th century in India. They used a yellow silk or cloth scarf, in the killings, and they aimed to crush the larynx whilst pressure was put on a victim's back, with the executioner's foot or knee placing pressure on the neck. But as an execution weapon, the garotte has existed for centuries, and was used in Rome during the 1st century BC. A number of conspirators were strangled to death using it, and throughout the centuries it was used continuously by different countries. It was used during the medieval period by the Spanish and the Portuguese, and was used during the Spanish Inquisition to execute heretics. It's a link to Spain where it is most famously used, and it was used during the Spanish conquest of the Americas. One famous victim of the garotte was the Inca Emperor, Atahalupa, who was strangled to death using the garotte. Then his skin was burned along with his clothes, and in great shame his remains were then given a Christian burial. But the use of the garotte and strangulation continued to spread, for example in the Ottoman Empire, it was seen as an execution method for the extremely high class. Members of the royal family and government were the only ones who were executed using the weapon, and a bowstring was used during many times inside the Ottoman Empire. But the Spanish would face garrotting of their own soldiers during the Peninsular War of 1808 to 1814, when French soldiers used the weapon to strangle the opponents of Napoleon's rule. Often the executions of people using the garrot did occur in public. This would involve the similar steps as a normal public execution would, in which a condemned individual would have been accompanied to the scaffold with guards and a priest, who took them from their prison cell to the site of their execution. Once on the scaffold, a priest would give them final prayers, before they were then strangled in front of the crowd. The executioner would be considered rather skilled in their jobs, as they could kill someone in this method rather quickly, as the condemned were also tied to posts and stakes, to ensure they did not struggle and fight as the life was choked out of them. In 1810 a metallic garrote emerged in Spain, and on the 28th of April 1828, it was said that the garrote was the only method of execution for civilians inside the country. In May 1897, the final public garrotting inside of Spain took place in Barcelona, and following this the executions occurred in private, inside of prisons. 
there are accounts of famous versions of the execution method. For example, one device was a chair with ropes and rings with locks for the wrists, forearms, waists and the legs of the condemned. The backrest of the chair had a wooden pole with a collar to shackle the prisoner's neck and a bolt which rotated. The bolt's end was usually a razor blade or a sharp spike in the shape of a star. When the executioner tightened the device, the spikes dug into the condemned's neck and broke their spinal cord. These improvised garrots made death quicker, meaning that there was no need to wait for asphyxiation to occur, and it was considered much more reliable. But the garrot machines did have some issues. Firstly, the bolt would sometimes malfunction and go through the neck without touching the spine, causing the offender a huge amount of pain, which sometimes was not fatal. In the 1800s, a witness said of garrotting, the bound person was dragged to a gallows and made to sit on a narrow bench, back tied to a heavy post. The executioner locks in the steel collar and fastens it to the post at the neck. When everything was ready, he took both hands and grabbed hold of the hand wheel, waving to his assistant to throw a black handkerchief over the condemned man's face, covering it. Then he began to turn the handle. The prisoner jerking his arms and taking breath were all signs that life was leaving the thief. Resting for a few moments, the execution appeared under the handkerchief and making another turn of the wheel, pulled the veil. Along with the dead body, the last of the well-visible convulsions played out and the man's mouth gaping and eyes bulging out. In terms of when this specific style of garrote was invented, it's believed that a Spanish man named Garrote created an instrument of death. He had allegedly seen a family member hanging which had gone wrong and tried to make a more successful execution method. But it's believed in Spain that the device was a cruel part of the Spanish Inquisition and may have also been used in the 8th century. But the final civilian executions in Spain by garrotting came in May 1959 when prisoner Pilar Prades and serial killer Jose Maria Yarabo in July 1959 were executed in prison. But there were more executions carried out inside the military as these did not stop until the 1970s. Hein Shea and Salvador Puig Antish in March 1974 had been sentenced to death for killing police officers and these were the final state-sanctioned garrottings in the whole world. Some criminals did request execution by garrotting in Spain, but following these two final executions, the executions were commuted to imprisonment. But interestingly, the final country to abolish garrotting as a method of executing criminals was Andorra, who did this in 1990, but bizarrely had not used this practice to execute criminals since the late 12th century, meaning to outlaw it was rather pointless. The garrote today is mostly linked to the Spanish, in a similar way that the guillotine is a symbol of the French. But it was an execution method which could be rather primitive, or more complex, and as time went on the machines were used to reliably take the life of a criminal. Those who often faced the brutal punishment were murderers, but despite some things sometimes going wrong with the weapon, it was seen as reliable, especially using the machine. But choking the life of a prisoner who was tied to a stake would be more complex, and could take a lot longer. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.